What's up everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a nice sit down, just Q&A or like kind of just me catching up with prep and everything. I feel like I haven't done like a sit down video in a while. Rocket wants to be in it, obviously. And I just wanna go through and just like answer some questions, kind of show you guys like how I'm feeling, stuff like that. So hopefully you enjoy the video and we'll get right into it. Most popular question is definitely, how is prep going? How am I feeling? This is a day by day thing. There's some days I wake up and like immediately I know that it's going to be struggle city. And the fact that like, I feel tired, I feel heavy and just not very motivated because I have those like tired and heavy feelings. And there's some mornings I wake up and I'm like, I think today's gonna be a good day. And my mental is so much better. I would say in comparison from last year to this year, I would safely say that like 80% of my days, unfortunately, have been those like really tough days. Whereas I think last year, because it was so new and I was really excited for it and I was, it was a goal that I had set for myself to like see how dedicated I am. I was very ha much happier. Like I would say, like I would say that it was the opposite. It was like 80, 20 and this year it's 20, 80 in terms of like happy to sad. It's not that this year I'm not motivated or I'm not excited for what's happening, but there's this like overhanging pressure that I feel and I understand that like pressure is a privilege and I remind myself that every single day and that I'm so blessed and so lucky to be in a position where I do feel pressure and that people are looking forward to seeing my routine this year. But I would say when it builds and builds and builds day after day for like weeks on end, it becomes a lot mentally. And I think that's kind of why the 80% is so heavy this year on just being a little bit more down and less like super go lucky happy. And so special shout out to all my friends who I see on a daily basis, shout out to Dal, who like literally has to deal with me on the days that I'm like, I'm absolutely a puddle today. So those days are so hard. And those people show up to show up for me continually and remind me of the bigger picture of everything. So I get very tunnel vision in that I'm like, oh my gosh, today sucks. Everything is going terribly and I'm not improving. And I get very laser focused in on all the negative. And then I have these amazing people around me who are able to uplift me and bring me into the space of like, but look how far you've come. Look at everything you've accomplished. You've put in the work and it's showing. And when you step on that stage in September and October, you're gonna see it. You don't see it now, but I eventually will. So super, super lucky for that. I think in terms of prep, one of the most important things or some of the biggest tips I have going into it is one, you need to have an external goal outside of just results. Bodybuilding is so hard and you're gonna lose more than you're gonna win. And it's something where you can't control the outcome of winning. And like a lot of sports, you can't control the outcome of winning. So if you go into something like this, there has to be a deeper reason as to why you wanna be into it. So for me this year, it's to prove to myself that I am good at this sport and that I have potential in this sport. Last year for me, it was just to prove that I was dedicated. I know I'm dedicated. I know I can follow a diet, a workout program, a cardio program, all this fun stuff. Not fun, but stuff. And this year it's more that like, I wanna to prove to myself that I'm, I believe in myself. And so I think that's been my major focus. It's not about coming first. It's not about beating X amount of people or whatever it is. I don't, I, results as, as silly as it sounds, and I know a lot of people aren't gonna believe it because they're gonna be like, obviously you wanna you know win and do better. I could care less about the results in terms of if I show up and I do a presentation round and I'm able to proudly post that video on my Instagram, I will consider that such a big win because last year I never posted my posing routine because I was just so self-conscious about it. I wasn't really proud of it. I didn't love it. And so this year I wanna be able to do that. I feel like that's a really good goal for myself. And then in terms of the routine round, I know I probably sound like a broken record, but it's just basically being able to be proud of what I put on the stage. I had a tremendous amount of trouble this year with this year's routine in that probably from weeks 12 to seven, I hated my routine. I hated doing it. I hated the thought of it. Whenever I would do it, I would get frustrated. And so that was something I was not anticipating for this year's prep. I thought routine I have, like I, I do this stuff all the time. It's what I do on my Instagram. It's what I do for a living. There should be no issue. And th there was multiple issues with my routine in terms of the way it felt when I was flowing with it, in terms of getting like a slight mental block with my cart full and just overall my endurance and execution of like the last half of my routine just like was not clicking until about six weeks out. So very recent, cause we're about two weeks out now. So literally make like a month and a half ago, I was like in complete shambles. The tables have turned and we're in a better place. And it's much um, more enjoyable to work on. This is gonna be, I feel like when I'm, I'm trying to like express everything about prep and it's gonna be very raw. So if it's like all over the place, I super apologize to my YouTube channel and you guys watching. I'm gonna try to like cover all the aspects and questions as I can, but also just kind of like go through all my emotions as well. Ooh, I'm gonna get emotional in this one because this one's scary. <laughs> that 
not Dallas is concerned. Okay, so when I talk back about, um, oh my God, I hate crying, about not enjoying my routine from basically 12 to seven weeks out, that was a harder time for me, mainly because like, I obviously had invited a lot of people to come to Olympia to watch and support, which is super great. But at the in the back of my head, and I felt super guilty the entire time, was I was like almost hoping for like a valid reason to be able to back out of competing. So whether that was like getting into an accident or hurting myself, I almost wanted like a, oh, I hate crying. But I basically just wanted like a, a reason to be able to tell my audience, tell you guys like, hey, like as much as I wanted to compete, something tragic happened, I hurt myself or whatever, and now I can't. And that's something that I've literally never gone through in terms of like wishing like a harmful thing on myself. And so I felt guilty, obviously, because I had people who I invited, people I bought tickets and everything that to come to the show. But then I also just felt like, oh, I love dogs. I know when you're sad. But I also just felt like in the big grand scheme of things to be in a position of like this mental weakness for myself that I had never experienced before was not only scary, but I also just felt like like a wussy, like, wow, Taylor, like, you really, like, you, you can't get your, your stuff together so much that you have to, like, be in this mental, like, sad state, and so that was something that was, like, very new to me this year, and I think that's kind of why 80%, because, like, six to, um, sorry, 12 to, to seven weeks out is a significant amount of time to just feel like you, you want the worst thing to happen, so that was kind of, like, a really tough moment. Sorry, I'm probably sniffling so loud into this mic. Del's gonna be, like, editing this being, like, <laughs> That's the really down part that I've actually never really shared with anyone. Like I know Jody's probably watching my YouTube channel too being like, I didn't know this. I'm someone who like internalizes a lot of stuff for myself and like a lot of like the dark days and stuff like that. I don't really talk to a lot of people about it. It's more just like I try to handle it and like hunker down myself and get through it. I do think that during that period of time was a time that I probably should have reached out for help more help than what I was giving myself. And so whether it was like a sports psychologist or talking to a therapist, I think that would have been really good for me. So in retrospect, looking back, if I ever feel that way in upcoming preps or in any other aspect of my life, that's a good time and you know to, to seek help and definitely get through it a lot better in a more healthy way because to be that to be sad for that long is very not the best. There's that, there's the crying out of the way. And then hopefully the rest of this will go very smoothly. Another question I get a lot is whether or not I think this year's routine is better than last year's routine or just like comparing the two. I'll be honest, last year's routine when I did it and I was practicing it, I never thought it was amazing. I never thought it was gonna be like what it was. And so same thing with this year's routine, as I'm practicing, as I'm doing it, when I was learning it, obviously it was very hard. And I feel like in my mind, this routine this year was harder for me to learn and get flowing than it was last year. So I definitely do think this routine is more challenging for me this year. Whether or not people are gonna find it as impressive or as entertaining compared to last year's or compared to what they're expecting, I don't really have much control over that. I'm just gonna do my best. And I know in my head what I need to do in order to perform it in a way that when I get off stage, I'll be like, yes, that's what I wanted to do. The best way I can describe how I approach my routine is I approach it as like an Instagram post. When I'm making my videos, obviously I have as many takes as possible to get the one that I end up posting. On the Olympia stage, you have one shot, you have to get it done. As long as what I put on that stage is like what I would be happy with putting on my Instagram, then I'm in a good place. I do think there's levels to it though, because even on Instagram, sometimes when I post a video, I'm like, yeah, I like this video. I'm happy with it. I post it. I think it's impressive. And then there's videos that I do where I'm like, I personally don't find this impressive. I don't find it that challenging, but I know my audience will find it entertaining. So I'll post that video. And then there's also instances where I post it and I, and I immediately know when I'm watching and I'm like, yes, like this is like, I don't know if like euphoric is the right word, but there's like this feeling of like, wow, this is like a good video. People are going to love it. I love it. And you send it out. And then that's the one that typically goes viral. Like sometimes you have that sense. With my routines, I will say I have never had that sense. Even last year's routine when I was doing it to this year's routine, I never was like at a point like, oh my gosh, if I do it exactly like this, this is going to be a banger. It's gonna be a viral sensation. Like I'm one, very hard on myself when it comes to my routine, but two, I think that because I do it every single day and I practice it and I practice the skills and I break it into parts, I do it in full and I show it to people, I record myself, I send it to Jody, all this stuff because I'm constantly just like watching it, analyzing it, it's very hard for me to see it being cool, being amazing. I just see all the flaws as of right now. So I do think it's a good routine. I think it's a harder routine than last year. And from feedback from people that I've talked to and I've had watched the routine, they, they enjoy it, they like it, but again, 
I won't know whether or not it's a great routine until really the day of. And I'm definitely someone who needs like confirmed affirmations. So I know last year's routine was good because I have the confirmed affirmation of it was ranked number one for fitness. This year, my routine, I have no idea where it ranks because I haven't even done my first show yet. So I think after Anaheim, once I've done it on stage, once I've gotten judges feedback, people's feedback, I'll have a better idea of where I think it lays in comparison to my last year's routine. I do hope people enjoy it and I hope that it's not anticlimactic or people are like, mm, that was mid or I was expecting more. I think that's a fear that lives very heavily in my mind. And again, is one of those contributing factors that like goes over my head. One of the things about me as a person is I, I don't like feeling inadequate. I don't like feeling like I'm a disappointment. And so I really hope that whatever I perform on stage, people recognize the hard work that's gone into it and don't make those kind of hurtful comments, fingers crossed, but of course the internet's a mean world. So I am mentally preparing myself for things like that to happen because when you build things up so much, like when you, oh my God, Deadpool Wolverine, fantastic movie, so good, best of whatever. I went to go see that movie and I was like, it was like a 7.5. And so I do have to have that realization that the more people hype something up in their head, when it actually happens, nine times out of 10, it's not gonna exceed those expectations. It's not gonna meet those expectations, but I have to focus on my expectations for myself. So that's kind of where my mentality is at with my head, where my mentality is at with my routine. Moving on to like my overall physique. I'm actually very happy with my physique. I am very proud of myself because this year, Jody has been pushing me in terms of conditioning and coming in a lot you know, leaner and we had a really good off season. And even through prep, we had a little bit of trouble uh, through, I would say week eight to five where I wasn't pooping. And that was very not mentally good for me either. So <laughs> that was a hard struggle as well. But I think we're definitely ahead of where we were last year, which is my main goal. And I think posing wise, I've been working with Silva ton. I feel a bit more comfortable working through my posing routine and hitting my poses. So I'm just excited to show that I'm the full package basically, because I get this comment a lot that yeah, Taylor can do routine, but her physique is nowhere close to where it needs to be. And obviously I know this is my second season of bodybuilding. I'm not going to look like some of the other girls. I just don't have the muscle maturity, I don't have the years of training and conditioning and and all the work that they've put in. I just wanna basically show up and, and prove to people that I understand that this sport is bodybuilding as a whole. And I myself am trying to work towards being the whole package and coming in this year with improvements in the physique round and still having a great routine. I think that's me showing that I am the full package, that I am trying and that I respect the sport and that I understand what the sport is and that I'm not someone who just took an off season and didn't care or didn't take my prep seriously. Like I go in 100%, I don't cheat on my diet, I don't cheat on my cardio or my workouts. I'm very focused. When I get those comments of people being like, oh, she's fat, she's soft, she doesn't even care, she's not even bodybuilding, she's not a good representation of the sport. I always find that hurtful because I feel like people don't understand that I work just as hard as everybody else and I'm just I'm just behind. I'm, a, I'm not just a couple years behind, I'm years behind a lot of these girls. And I do show up and I do try my best and I work very hard. Breathe for a second. Cause I always get emotional during that part too. Um, oh, I hate, I, I hate when you're crying and you're like, um, and you're like fucking, you're just like a, sh I, I picture myself as like a shriveled up prude or something like, <laughs> um, oh, that's my banana bread. So overall physique wise, before I got emotional there, I'm very happy with where we're at. I think we're gonna come in with a better package and I'm gonna be more confident. And that's like one of my main things. So that's kind of where I'm at physique and routine wise. Future plans after prep. I also get this, like what is, what am I doing after prep? I have been in preps, I would say for a while. And because I literally did last year's prep, which was started in, I believe, eight May. I did May and then I competed in October and November Olympia. And then I did an entire like right away improvement season. And then I went back into my prep. So in my mind, I've been more on like a, tracking my food, specific workouts, cardio protocol, checking with my coach, literally for almost a year and a half. I personally am feeling towards the end that I need a break. So originally I was gonna apply for Arnold's. However, because this prep has a little bit been more emotional, a little more grueling, I do think having a break would be nice. I think, again, I will kind of know that plan and solidify it with Jody after the Olympia. For me right now, I just wanna get through Anaheim, September 21st, and Olympia, October 11th. And then after that, I will make my decision. I do wanna, and I, I feel like I sound so cheesy saying this, but I do wanna pour 
into other aspects of my life because I do feel like bodybuilding is something that takes over so much time. So for instance, for my YouTube channel, there's things that I want to do like eating challenges or like traveling and meeting with creators and like creating more videos and like really growing on my YouTube because that's an area of my business that I really want to see grow and expand and I want to like put a lot of attention towards and being in prep, it's very hard to do that. So I would love to just kind of focus on that for a little bit. In addition to on my Instagram, you guys see that I do like more cooking videos and stuff like that. And just to kind of be able to get into more of that space on my Instagram as well, where I'm able to experiment with recipes and like eat food and all that stuff I think would be really great. And because it's just really hard to do that while in prep or even in an off season, I think there's a lot of validity to me wanting to take a little bit of time off before jumping into a season. But again, we'll see what, what unfolds after Olympia. Maybe I'll get like the bug and be like, oh my God, I love this. Like, let's do it again. And I'll go right into Arnold prep. Unlikely, but you know, you never know. What are you most looking forward to after prep? Honestly, getting back into regular life. It's, you realize how hyper focused prep is when you get to the point at the end where you're like, I just wish I could have a rice cake, but like I can't have rice cakes because rice cakes make me bloat. Instead I have to have oatmeal. Or I wish I could have a banana, but instead I can only have a kiwi. Or it gets to the point where I have to peel my zucchini and my cucumbers. I can't just like eat them as they are. Or I can't have spinach right now because that was causing some digestional stuff for me. So it's just getting back into just a regular healthy lifestyle. It's not even like, oh, I wanna gorge on waffles and chicken and poutine and like all this stuff. I literally just want to enjoy like oats with an apple. That'd be great. Or like peanut butter. That'd be great. Just like the simple things in life that are healthy, but during prep, they're just restricted. So I think I'm most excited to just get back into more of a balanced lifestyle versus like a very hyper, you know, fixated thing on prep. I'm also excited just to spend more time with my friends. I feel like I haven't seen my group of friends like Zandy Bell, Beat On, and Julian. Like you guys, you see the friends that I hang out with from before. I haven't seen those people in like, months. I haven't seen my sister. I haven't gone up to Barry to see my sister to like hang out, hang out with her dogs or even like just have dinner with her in like six months. It's been so long. So just being able to get back into a little bit more of a social aspect, getting back to seeing my family would be really great. I do know some people who've been in prep a lot longer or like have been going through this longer are better at balancing. I'm personally not. I get very laser focused and I'm like, I need my routine to be the same every single day and I can't really stray away because then I just feel overwhelmed and I feel more tired and exerted and I just, I start to break down a little bit. And so for me, prep is like, it segregates me a lot from my regular life and my regular social stuff. And I would love to get back into that. Also rocket, poor little dude. I am so tired some days. Our walks are so slow. They're just around a block, but we still take 20 minutes because I just don't move very fast when I'm outside sometimes. And so to be a better dog mom, just to have more energy to take him out to like the dog parks or the beaches or on longer walks and actually like get good exercise for him where he's like able to take like 20, 30 minute walks would be really great where he's actually actively moving. So that way I feel like a better dog mom. Just little things like that is what I'm looking forward to after prep. Yeah, we talked about a lot of negatives in prep. Let's talk about the positives prep because obviously I wouldn't be doing this stuff and I wouldn't be going through all this without a positive or like a light at the end of the tunnel. I do think prep teaches you a lot about yourself. And so each prep is a chapter of growth. And so obviously this one, although it was harder, I do think I've learned a lot about myself. And I think that coming out of it on the other end has actually helped me appreciate the process a little bit more and appreciate whatever happens happens because everything was so down. Just coming out of that down period at all is something that is a win in my opinion. I think for me, prep is something that as much as it segregates me from my family, and my friends and my social and my food and everything like that. I also love the routine aspect of it. I love that I know what I'm eating that day, what my workout is, what I expect for myself and I can just check off the list of the day and I feel very organized, I feel on top of my stuff. And in terms of even like content, like I know that when I'm filming, it has to be efficient. We have to get everything done. And I just feel like it helps keep me in a very organized state, which I really, really like. I also like prep because it helps you, you make different connections with preps. So one of my really good friends, Feli, you guys have seen her. She got into prep this year too. So we've bonded and gotten closer because she's gone through prep herself. I talked to other prep athletes, both in my division and outside of my division. And we're closer friends because again, we can relate to someone and you just, the other person just understands and you're like, oh no, like I can't have that. They fully understand what that means and they don't push it. They don't question it. They just let you be. And I feel like it's just, you have this own separate group of friends. Kind of like if you're on a, 
like at university and you have like a varsity team you have like your varsity friends and you also have like your classmate friends like you just have two separate areas that you can pour into and have good relationships in so I do really like that about competing I do think competing has also given me really great opportunities in terms of the brands that I work with the brands that I work with have been nothing but supportive and so it's really nice to see that I have support for everything across the board that I do whether it's calisthenics whether it's just content whether it's bodybuilding as well as their opportunities within the actual IFBB so I went to Arizona this year and did the showdown which is really really fun obviously I get to compete in different states so last year I competed in Reno this year I'm competing in LA which is really fun and then I'm also going to Las Vegas so there's travel incorporated with competing which makes it fun as as hard as it is it's a very rewarding process at the end of each day and at the end of the entire journey you look back and you're like wow like I accomplished so much and you can be really proud of yourself for sticking to the plan and just performing those are the good things about prep that I enjoy first food I'm gonna have ooh that changes on a day-to-day -day basis because this morning I woke up and I was like I want like a fat sandwich like a fat grilled cheese like I want you know those like cheesy videos where the bread opens and it's cheese with like bacon steak chicken like I want a protein packed grilled cheese with like a side of crispy fries that would slap that would be so good I would love that but then there's days where I'm like I would just love like a big bowl of pasta or like a twice baked potato I crave so many things but I think in Anaheim I haven't even looked at restaurants yet but Las Vegas we booked a restaurant I'm going to the Gordon Ramsay like pub and grill because I figured that's a really great choice for everyone who's coming to watch and that way they can like come and like kind of get whatever food they want and I can kind of get all the food that I want but after Anaheim I feel like Anaheim I'm gonna want something like right now I want sushi because I had sushi on Monday so I'm like oh I want sushi again but something like light but still kind of like on the healthy line so whether it's like a good like poke bowl or like a, like a sashimi or like korean barbecue just something high in protein even though i do eat a lot of protein right now i'm just craving like like high protein and cheese pretty much is what i'm kind of gathering from my thoughts right now i think the first regular meal i'm gonna cook i i love breakfast food and so for me i think i would make like um my my three ingredient waffle which is just literally like eggs banana and oatmeal but then i'd have like a bunch of fruit on it and then maybe like high protein ice cream with like my zero calorie maple syrup on it like that would be like such a delicious morning breakfast for me that'd be so good and then maybe for i've always wanted i've seen these little cups like you make in a muffin pan tray you put like rice and you make it crispy and then you load it with like kind of like sushi so like you put like salmon cucumber avocado like oh i would also love to make that on my instagram so things like that i'm really excited to make because they're healthy they're high in protein they're good but it's just they're not in my current diet right now which is very minimal so i'm excited to make that kind of stuff i guess in terms of weight that's one thing is like how like what's my body fat percentage i actually don't know what my body fat percentage is i didn't get a dex scan last year i'm getting one this year so around july i was 18 percent definitely not 18% anymore I would say if I could guess I would say I'm like low 15s high 14 percent I would say I'm getting a DEXA scan in a week so I'll post the results on my Instagram there I do think in terms of like what I care about I don't really focus on that it's more just like how I look so I don't really focus on a ton of numbers it will be interesting to see like where I kind of sit in the body fat percentage I guess well actually you know what I'm curious about is my next off season and how that goes because obviously I'm gonna be able to eat more which is gonna be very very exciting but it'll just be interesting to see what like a second round of doing an off season will look like because this is my first year of doing a season off season season so I know next year will just be a whole different ball game and hopefully I'm never gonna say I know what to expect anymore because after this year I, I never know what to expect I'm not gonna say that I can have a good idea of what I will need to do like mentally and have like things that I can learn from from this season to carry into the next in terms of what I can expect from each prep every single prep is different and this year my prep was not linear it was up and down up and down up and down whereas last year was completely linear which is why it's so different this year and so hopefully next year hopefully next year it's linear who knows but hopefully that kind of answers everyone's questions and kind of gives you a good idea of how well and not well prep was going and I'm just really excited to step on stage in Anaheim in about 15 days and kind of showcase everything that we've been working towards and a huge thank you to every single person who supported me sent me messages encouraging me because those messages are I kid you not the only reason some days that I'm able to continue to do what I do because I'm like someone took the time out of the day to reach out to me to see how I'm doing to check in on me to say that they support me and that just means everything so if I can you know make you guys proud and put on a good performance that's my main goal and you guys help me achieve that every single day thank you so much for listening sorry for crying but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video